Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick review of an accessory for a controller I reviewed a few weeks back, and that is the 8-Bit Do Mobile Clip for the Pro 2. And real quick, if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on everything happening with the channel. And with all that out of the way, let's take a look. So I'll get the box out of the way here. Here is the mobile clip. And as you can see, it's just a simple clip that attaches your phone to the Pro 2 controller. And this goes for $14.99 on Amazon. So a pretty cheap little accessory, but in the hands, it does feel really quality. It's nice and lightweight. 8 Do says this is 2.39 ounces and it feels really light. Doesn't feel like it's gonna add a lot of weight to your setup once everything's connected. And most of the clip is made out of this sturdy feeling ABS plastic, but there are some aluminum accents with the clip section here and with the tightening screws on the adjustable pivots here. So I've got my Pro 2 right here and I'm not gonna go into much of the details of this controller since I covered them pretty exhaustively in that review. So if you wanna check that out for yourself, I'll leave a card right here and you can go see what I think of this controller overall. But spoiler warning, I'm very happy with it. I think this is a great controller. I think it's really versatile. You can use it across many different devices. So that's why I think this mobile clip makes for a perfect accessory. And I do believe the mobile clip is also compatible with the predecessor to the Pro 2, the Pro Plus. I think it has the same little clips on the bottom here that allow it to connect. So let's get this on here. Let's get this centered and pop it on. You can see where it clips in here. I do really like how easily this goes on the Pro 2. I don't feel like I'm going to scratch the controller over time. It goes on really easily, but once it's on there, it feels secure. So I think that's perfect. And as you can see here, we have these two pivot points with the tightening screws. So uh, I think this is great because it really allows you to kind of adjust the placement of your phone over the controller to give you a really good balance in the hands. So it's not pulling forward on your hands or, or getting uncomfortable like that. This reminds me of the Fixture S1 uh, for the Nintendo Switch that I've also reviewed on the channel. But to adjust the Fixture, you simply moved it at the pivot points. But with the mobile clip, you need to loosen these screws first before you can adjust the angle. And then once you have the spot that you like, you tighten them up again. So I don't know, I think that's maybe a little bit of a clunky interface, but once you kind of adjust your perfect angle, I don't think you'll be changing that too often. And I do appreciate that you can tighten this up to the point that it doesn't jiggle around when you're moving your hands. So that took a little getting used to at first, but I think it's a perfectly suitable setup. And then on the back here too, nice little feature, you do have a pass through for the USB-C port and the sync button. So you can charge the controller without having to remove the clip. And I think that covers the basics. So I'm gonna get my phone attached here and I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max. So probably one of the larger phones that you'd be fitting to this accessory, but it does fit just fine. 8 bit Do says the mobile clip will fit phones up to 86 millimeters wide. So I'm not sure how many people know the width of their phone in millimeters, but if your phone is around the size of an iPhone 12 Pro Max or smaller, you're going to be fine. And then you simply attach the phone to the top here. This is an adjustable clip it stretches out like so we have these nice rubber pads here too to protect from scratching your phone I've used similar clips like this in the past that just kind of have hard plastic here and they did take chunks out of my silicone case so it's nice that these are nice and rubberized and soft and haven't had any issues with it scuffing up my case so I'll get this connected here make sure these are all tightened up and there you go there is my phone Oh, had to reorient the screen there. But there is my phone on the mobile clip with the Pro 2. And I have a game of the Pathless going on here. And you can see I'm already connected. So I'm playing this from Apple Arcade. So this is a really cool option if you do a lot of mobile gaming. Definitely feels better than uh, using touch controls on the screen for me. I'm sure that'll be true for a lot of people. And I'm not someone who does a ton of mobile gaming, but having the controller attached to my phone is definitely enticing me to play a little more. I just really don't like touch controls, you know, where I'm touching the screen to move around the game. And I did get a free 12 month subscription to Apple Arcade when I purchased this phone. So I am taking advantage at the moment. And beyond playing mobile games on my phone, the thing I'm enjoying the most about this Mobile Clip Pro 2 setup is using the remote play feature on my PS5 and streaming that to my phone. So I'll get that set up real quick here. 
go into my remote play app, connect to my PS5, get the screen reoriented here. And here I'm playing some Ratchet and Clank. This is really cool for me because Man, the Switch has really spoiled me. Even if I'm not out and about, I still enjoy playing the Switch in handheld mode, just lying on the couch or lying in bed. Sometimes that's enough to get me to play the Switch over my PS5, uh, just convenience sake, get a little more comfortable. So I really enjoy having the option of playing my PS5 from the bed or from the couch, just lying down. Been trying to finally make my way through Persona 5, so I think this will really help me get it done. So yeah, I think this is a really slick setup. If you've already got this controller and maybe you have a PS5 or a PS4 or an Xbox and you've been interested in doing remote play, I think this is a great way to go. But real quick, I do wanna talk about a few of the little hiccups I had in getting this all connected and working properly because I think some people will probably run into similar issues as I did. So I'm gonna close all this stuff real quick. Pull this off here. Now, if you didn't watch my previous review of the Pro 2, one of the cool features of the controller is the switch that's been added to the back that kind of lets you seamlessly use this across different devices. There are different modes you can place it in with the S being for Switch, A for Apple, D for Android, and X for Windows. And when I first tried getting this connected to my phone, I was having a little bit of issues. I was putting it into A for Apple mode and then just going into my Bluetooth settings. But for whatever reason, Reason, the controller just wouldn't show up when I opened it up in my Bluetooth settings and tried pairing it. It just wouldn't appear. So I did find this really helpful post on Reddit that said you actually have to go about it a different way to get it connected the first time. And then once you do, pairing it works just like your other remembered Bluetooth devices. But for whatever reason, this is the way I had to go about getting it connected. So instead of going right into Bluetooth, I had to go to my settings and then down to accessibility and then switch control, and then switches, and then Bluetooth devices, and then the controller showed up here. But that is not the end of my story here. So just assuming that, you know, I'd be using this with my iPhone, I had this in Apple mode, and when I got it paired using that method, the Pro 2 showed up as a DualShock 4, which I didn't really think meant anything. I was like, oh, that's just how the phone is recognizing it. But once I got everything connected that way and started playing with this, uh, both with games on my phone and using my PS5 remote app, the lag was really, really bad, like borderline unplayable. I tried playing Crash Bandicoot and making the jumps over the gaps was nearly impossible. It was seriously like I would press the button and then I would release and hear the click from that release and then the character would jump. So I was pretty disappointed with that and figured, you know, I probably won't be using this that much if the lag is that bad. I just kind of thought, oh, this must be what playing games remotely feels like. But I was kind of concerned. I'm like, why is it lagging so bad with games on my phone? And then I came across yet another helpful comment on Reddit that suggested instead of putting the Pro 2 in Apple mode to switch it over to X, which I believe is for Windows, and then when I went through the same pairing process of going into accessibility and switch controls, the Pro 2 showed up as the 8-Bit Do Pro 2. And then when I connected that way, all the lag disappeared. It felt like it was a huge, huge improvement. Response time just felt really similar to playing, you know, on the console itself. So if you are planning on using the mobile clip with an iPhone, that is definitely something to keep in mind. I hope this is helpful for anyone out there who's maybe in the troubleshooting process right now because I was one of those people myself. And then once I got all of that straightened out, I really started enjoying my time with it and I've been using this a bunch. So yeah, I think that really covers it. There's not a ton to say. I think these mobile clips are pretty self-explanatory, but this is a nice quality one and it's great that it pairs with such a versatile controller that I'm really enjoying. And I was actually considering getting the Backbone accessory. I'm not sure if that's something you're familiar with, but it's being advertised quite a bit and that is an iPhone specific gaming device. And that actually kind of expands around the phone and gives you 
controllers on either side, kind of similar to the Joy-Con, but it does connect via the lightning port. And when I was still experiencing the lag issues, I was like, oh, maybe the backbone would be a far better setup. Maybe that would eliminate some of this lag I'm feeling. But now that I have this all straightened out, I think this makes for a pretty decent contender up against the backbone because the Pro 2 itself is going to run you $49.99 and then the mobile clip is $14.99. So you're looking at a total setup, you know, obviously if you already have the phone, you're looking at a total setup of like $65 compared to the backbone, which goes for 99, I believe. And maybe it would feel slightly better in your hands, slightly better balanced to have the controllers on either side. But since this is adjustable enough to kind of bring the phone over the controller itself, I think this is a great option. And this setup is probably going to keep me from purchasing a backbone myself. So yeah, I think that's really gonna cover it. Really enjoying this little accessory. I highly recommend it if you have a Pro 2 already and you do some gaming on your phone or you're interested in remote play on one of your home consoles. I think this is a great thing to go with. I'll leave a link to the mobile clip and the Pro 2 down in the description below if you'd like to check those out for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like on your way out and also consider subscribing. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.